Okay, before we go into talking about uh, what's the best way to split the data or measure performance or um, uh, look at um, evaluation of models or before basically we'll go further, we need another tool, uh, a very convenient tool, which is called Confusion Matrix. It works in the following way. Imagine we want to um, just focus on two class problem to class classifier so we have positive examples which are true positives right imagine that this um, or assume rather assume that the stop uh, labels positives and negatives they are true and positives and negatives here are predicted so <clears throat> when a positive the true positive in the data or in ground truth is predicted as positive we call them true positives when a negative is predicted as, as positive uh, as positive we call them false negatives uh, false positives sorry and when uh, a, a negative or predictive it is predicted as negative we call them true negative and when a positive was predicted as negative we call them false negatives okay this structure is called a confusion matrix so ideally ideally we want zeros in false negatives and in false positives but since ideal situation is rarely possible if at all we need to understand the trade-offs between the numbers so one of the things uh, to talk about is um, a measure or a set of measures that can characterize this matrix in a more um, compact form, right? There are two sets of metrics that people use uh, to measure model performance or a classifier performance. One set is um, operating with something called sensitivity. and specificity and another operates with something called precision and they call so sensitivity and specificity are easy to uh, describe for the start so sensitivity hmm, did I spell it correctly sensitivity yes okay it's easy to show graphically in terms of the um, confusion matrix sensitivity is nothing but true positive rate so we have true positive over uh, 
all predictions of positive class of, of the true positive class and specificity is basically true negative rate this part over the whole negative class this is sensitivity and specificity precision on the other hand is um, slightly different well, actually it's a new metric precision is yes true positives is similarly true positives over everything that was predicted as positive so notice sensitivity is true positive rate how many samples of the positive class were predicted correctly how many samples of the positive class precision is how many samples that were predicted as positive were actually positive and recall is the same as sensitivity recall is precisely the same as sensitivity so those come uh, from different camps precision recall is from information retrieval and sensitivity and specificity is more about classifier performance and um, as you say um, well as you see we only have three uh, measures and each one the classifier can cheat right oops excuse me uh, for for each measure a classifier can cheat if we maximize only one measure so it, say i think it would be nice if we have the following uh, I think it would be nice if we have this recall is the same as sensitivity. And then we have precision. specificity of true negative rate so um, different camps use different uh, metrics for example if it's information retrieval we'll imagine a search engine and for search engine precision is very important because um, precision is whatever was correct among what was returned so we want high precision we want uh, to return the queries or um, when you search we want to only show you those um, pages that are relevant to your query that are what you're searching for we don't care so much about recall it's uh, like okay there are too many pages we don't care about how many we didn't find that are still relevant we don't want to annoy you we don't want to show you pages 
that are irrelevant. So we want high precision and we don't care about recall that much. But um, say uh, recall a model um, that um, optimizing recall, just recall, can um, return everything, every prediction as positive class and then it will retrieve every not everything uh, in the positive class right it'll assign positive class to everything so the, the recall will be high sensitivity um, okay the model can cheat if we only um, well oh, sorry specificity if we only maximize specificity the model can return negative class for everything and again true negative rate will be very high because everything in the negative class will be labeled as negative. Well, also everything in the positive class. And then um, precision is also can be cheated if we only maximize precision. Then um, we can be very cautious and only um, assign positive to very high probability or well, very high assurance confidence classes we will set a threshold so high that only uh, those that the model is absolutely sure in it will return so as you see each one of those i want to say four but there are actually only three each one of those three by itself is not that that interesting but there is something that um oops. there's something that um, emerges that is useful the thing <laughs> sorry the thing called balanced accuracy so we have balanced accuracy So balanced accuracy is sensitivity, basically an average uh, of sensitivity and specificity. So imagine um, this problem. Those are positives, negatives as predicted uh, or as actual, and those are as predicted. And we have um, five. True positives. And false negatives. Fifty false positives. And uh, oh, oh, oh. ten thousand true negatives. So very imbalanced data set in this case the accuracy what is the accuracy by the way so we, we're looking at the balanced accuracy but our accuracy is nothing but our correct predictions number of correct to number of total predictions 10,000 divided by um, what do we get 10 plus 5 plus 50 plus 10,000 and our accuracy in this case 
is amazing. It's close to 99.4%. What can be better? But we know that um, actually if we predict everything as negative class, then our accuracy would be just don't predict anything for the positives zero predict everything as the negative and um, since we don't predict anything as the positive we get even better accuracy so by completely ignoring positive class we will get better accuracy just total crap right uh, that's not what we want let's see for the same thing what is the sensitivity sensitivity is true positive rate 515 which is about 33% and specificity is true negative rate which is Nine point five percent. So negative rate is very high. Then our balanced accuracy is thirty three point three plus ninety nine point five divided by two, and this is sixty six point five four percent so balanced accuracy seem to make sense but um, wait a second uh, what does the balance accuracy give us when uh, we um, totally uh, don't predict the positive class what is the balanced accuracy of the classifier um, here that is so good right balanced accuracy for that classifier will be let's again compute sensitivity for this classifier which will be okay uh -huh. zero over 15 which is zero sensitivity or true positive rate is zero and specificity true negative rate is 100 percent because well, remember everything is negative now just predict everything is negative so all of the negative classes will be guessed correctly but then our balance accuracy in this case is totally random at chance level 50%. So that's one balanced, uh, surprise, measure uh, for accuracy. Um, but if we are in the precision recall camp, precision recall then it's more preferable or another you know an, another um, legal measure or of classifier accuracy is f1 measure or f1 score since recall 
and sensitivity are exactly the same look how interesting um, that is then f1 f1 measure is uh, removing uh, mean of precision and recall what it means we divide the product of precision and recall by the sum of precision and recall and again depending on where you are what is your task what is your problem how you're solving it either f1 or balanced accuracy are good measures but there is another one which we will discuss later that is also important and um, maybe even preferable to use we're only starting to dig um, at uh, the this whole area of model comparison it's like you know don't think that I'm recommending to you or use balance accuracy or use F1 score or use this, use that. There is not a golden answer. There is not one size fits all that what free lunch, no free lunch uh, theorems are telling us. You always got to be careful and look at your problem that you're solving and look at what um, applies. So again, precision and recall is about information retrieval. Balanced accuracy is about um, evaluating a classifier, think about diagnostic tool. But um, there are multiple situations and multiple other metrics for information retrieval that could be relevant. Let's look at something else. Here is your confusion matrix. And this is a typical case for two class problem. But confusion matrix is also a very useful tool for multi-class problem. So this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 class problem. This is from one of my papers and um, just a real life example. So we have different kinds of drugs or actually we were trying to classify the or predict which drug was applied uh, to a culture of East and um, as before we only had before we only had two options in the truth positive and negative and two options in the prediction, positive and negative. So similarly here, we have 12 options in the truth and the same 12 options in what's predicted. And interestingly, what, what you can see, you can see a structure of your classifier where it is making mistakes. For example, this, I hope you see it. Let me put some red there. This. And that tells us that the model consistently confusing those two classes with each other and those two classes with each other. So just out of just a curious fact, uh, what we were looking for in the paper and why this was helpful, what we were actually looking for is um, drug repurposing. It's very expensive to conduct a clinical trial of a drug, uh, like a, some, some novel drug for a new disease. But if we have um, an already approved drug for some other disease, and if we find that it can treat something else um, as effectively, then we don't need to go through the expensive approval process. We can just um, you know go on an expedited route and apply it to a new disease, um, start marketing it and helping people with a different disease that we didn't know this already approved drug um, can help to. And by um, seeing that classifier confuses um, one drug with another uh, and seeing that one 
say drug is cardiovascular, another is a drug for the nervous system, we can find opportunities, and I'm talking about those two right now, we can find opportunities for drug repurposing. Okay.